Okay, we're going to deal with 20 ISOs, part number four, the item that is colored in. Uh, first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the dimensions of the object, and it's a little bit harder to see the length, width, and height here. Uh, the depth is one, two, three, four, five units deep. The width of the object is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight units across. But the height is a little bit hard to see because there's a two unit block going up and then a three unit block going across. For some people, they'll be like, oh, yeah, two plus three is five. But for other people, they look at it and their brains kind of freeze and they're like, I'm not really sure what to do here. If you're more visually inclined, you can just take a straight line and make a dotted line and where these two things, uh, where the two lines vertically and horizontally meet meet together, that's going to be where the height of your object is. So we can count that as well too. That'd be one, two, three, four, five. Either way is fine. It really just depends on how you think about it. Uh, it looks like we have a block that we can cut and chamfer out. So I think my strategy for this one is going to be to make a block and then begin cutting the pieces. We can do the cut in one step and we can also do the chamfer in one step as well too. The chamfer looks like there are two separate ones because this one is three across and three up. But this one over here is three down and only two across. So we'll have to use a two directional two, two directional chamfer on the right side, but on the left side, then we can do a one directional chamfer. Let's get this going in on shape and see if we can create it. Now I'm gonna to try to remember eight by five and we'll see what happens. Uh, going into one shape, let's create our document. We're gonna create a document, we're gonna call it 20 ISOs number four. Gonna get our plane showing up and we'll go ahead and move this over here so that you guys can actually see it. We're going to click on the top view and we're going to create a sketch on this top view and it's going to be 8 by 5 so I'm going to go over to the rectangle and I'm going to create a rectangle, drag out the rectangle and we're going to make it 8 units, enter, 5 units, enter, and then click the green checkbox to finish the sketch. Uh, then I'll move back to the home view so that we can extrude. Now, when we extrude it, I believe we are five units up. Yes, we are. One, two, three, four, five. So we're going to click the extrude button and we're going to go five units for the depth. We're going to go five and then hit enter. Five units up. Green check mark to finish it out. You should have a box that looks like this. Now, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create some cuts and we're going to create some chamfers. And I think the first thing that you want to do is create the cuts because that will give you the edges that you need to make your chamfers. Moving back over here, it looks like both of these boxes are going to be three units by three units. Uh, and we can just cut them down from the corners of the rectangle. So I'm going to go back into here and I'm going to click on the top part of the box and move into top view and I'm going to create two boxes. So I'm going to do rectangle. Make sure you're in the bottom corner over here, drag it out, and then click three, enter, three, enter. And on the other side, we're going to go drag the box out and click three, enter, three, enter. So now we're going to have three units and there's uh, these little red things. These are going to be constraints that are being put into it. So you can see how there's a parallel constraints. So these two lines here are going to be parallel to each other. And these are horizontal constraints. It's a horizontal line, which means these two lines are going to be parallel to each other. These happened because whenever I clicked on this top part of the rectangle, there was already a shape over here. So it automatically constrained them. Sometimes you're going to want that to happen and it's really convenient. And then other times you might not necessarily want those constraints to be there. Just be aware, and we'll, t we'll worry about those later. Click the green checkbox, and let's go to our top view. We're going to cut these down, and let's go back into the view and find out how far we need to go down. I see that the total distance that cut down is going to be one, two, three. So we're going to cut down three units in order to get what we want. So I'm going to extrude. I'm going to click on both. Uh, squares or rectangles and we're gonna go down so I'm gonna click remove 
And we're going to go down three units, and I'm going to click the green checkbox. Now we have two cuts. We need some chamfers here. I believe the first one on the front side of the ISO was a 3x3. Three three. So this is a one directional. So we can go ahead and add that one in. Um, there is a chamfer button. Click on it. And make sure the distance is 3. And make sure it's set to equal distance. And then click on that edge and it should cut down. Green checkbox. Okay, looks good. Now for the other one, we're going to have to use two directional. So I'm going to click on the chamfer button again, but make sure that instead of saying equal distance on the chamfer type, make sure that it says two distances. So I'm going to click on, ooh, hang on, let's see here. Um, going back to reference, looks like it's going to be two units in the X direction and three units in the Y direction. So back to on shape. Direction one, let's call it two. And direction two, let's call it three. If it's backwards, we can fix it. There's a little button over here that says swap or make the opposite direction. We can also just swap them. So I'm going to click on this. And that looks good. So X is going to be direction one. Y is going to be direction two. If I click the green checkbox, we now have object four of our 20 ISOs. Object four of our 20 ISOs. Okay.